Hi, I'm Joe Chura and welcome to 630 Naperville. Today on the show, we'll learn five ways to keep your heart healthy, take a closer look at Patty Gustin as she steps into her new role as a DuPage County board member, and sit down with Naperville business owner, civic leader and pilot, Bev patterson Fryer. But first, we're back on location with Caitlin Riswold and another great business forward. Welcome to Business Forward. I'm Kaylin Risvold, President and CEO of the Naperville Area Chamber of Commerce. And today we're learning about protecting your home and your businesses against burglary. We're here with Crime Prevention Specialist, Jim Pacetti of the Naperville Police Department. And let's dive right in. What are some tips to prevent your home and your business from being burglarized? A simple one is our 9 p.m. routine. Uh, every night before you go to bed, Get into a habit, make sure your no valuables are left in your cars if they're parked outside. Make sure your car door is locked. Make sure your garage door is shut and locked and all exterior doors are shut. And then turn some outside lights on. And you can either have them on all night because having lights on outside deters crime a lot of times. Or if you want to have motion sensors so the lights would only go on when they detect some type of motion outside. Do you think the light is really a big deterrent? Yes. A lot of criminals do not like lights. Even when you're out shopping in the businesses, we encourage people, park near a light in the well-lit areas. So as you're looking through lights and things might be well-lit, that could help cameras. How are the residential and the cameras and businesses, are they really helpful? They are helpful, especially to our investigators. We actually have a program with, with Ring has a neighborhood app that we can make a request. Anyone that lives in a certain area to go review their film or footage to see if they have caught anything because of an incident that happened, they could submit it to us. But then for people who just have camera systems, a lot of businesses, we have a camera registration program that works similar that when you submit your information, we could bring up a map and say this area that we could send requests out to those camera owners say, on this date and time, please review your footage, see if you caught anything and ask for them to send that to us. Have you found that to be successful? Yes, there have been some cases that they did get some footage or got a car description because maybe they parked on the block, but then we can match up the car going down the block at a similar time frame and we can go off it that way. What are other tips outside of lights and locking that can really help protect our businesses as we want to make sure that our valuables are taken care of? Again, making sure things locked up, anything real value, don't leave it out on display. Lock it up for the night. You know, put it in a secured area. Make it a challenge for people to get into. We don't want to make it easy. Uh, we don't want to leave like our purse sitting in the front seat of the car when we're inside the gym working out. It's real easy to have someone come up, break the window, and steal it. So it's almost like a crime of opportunity. We want to make it difficult for criminals. Uh, having good locks on our doors, having deadbolts on the doors are all going to help deter. If we can make it difficult for them, it's going to make it hard. They want to get in quick, in and out. If they got to spend a lot of time, they're not going to want to go in there. And what happens if you were to confront somebody who's trying to take items or valuables from your home or business? I think we don't encourage anyone to go up and confront. If you see someone, get out of there, avoid them, be a great witness. Get a description of what they're wearing, what they look like, anything you could tell us about them, which if they take off running, which way are they going, any vehicles, anything at all like that, and call the police right away. Ideally, is what we like for you to do. If you are threatened, you feel your life is in danger, you do have a right to defend yourself. And Naperville has a new text 911 program as yes. well, is that correct? Yeah, that started last year, text 911. It's a great feature, especially the younger ones, that's all they do is text nowadays. But the limitation is you have to make sure you f type out all the information. In a stressful situation, can be difficult. Uh, trying to text, you have to do your full address, typing out a full description. We don't want emojis. You have to give all that information out. But if you are in a situation where you're afraid to make any noise, yes, you can text the 911 in Naperville. And when you call 911, what's the most important thing that you can say on the phone right away? Your location. Get your location out right away because Regardless after that, we know where you are. So getting us your location and then what your emergency is, and then we can go from there. But location is a big thing because even if we lose connection, we know where you're at. 
And speaking of being where you're at, you do a great job going around our community and educating them on ways that they can work on crime prevention. What type of businesses do you work with and how do people get in touch with you to learn more tips? We've done stuff at churches, we've done it at retail businesses, we've been at doctor's office, uh, large office buildings. Uh, we can touch on anything from active shooter to SEPTED, which is crime prevention through environmental design. Uh, the way you have light, things laid out, lighting, access in and out of your building. So we can help you go through those things. Uh, you can go to the City of Naperville website, uh, naperville.il.us, and you can type in crime prevention information, safer neighbor, request a visit from an officer or a presentation, and then fill out a form from there, and we'd set that up. That's a great um, point. Environmental crime prevention? Crime prevention through environmental design such as your trees, your tall trees should be trimmed up to at least six feet so we can see underneath them. Your lower bushes shouldn't be higher than two feet to limit people from being able to hide behind them. So you have that clear view. If you're in a business, you can see your parking lot. If you have trees there, you can't see what's going on. Well, thank you for the tips and for sharing those with us today. And you can find more on the website, nctv17.org. So February is American Heart Month, a time when we all should put more focus on our cardiovascular health. I'm happy to welcome Dr. Ali, a cardiologist at Midwest Cardiovascular Institute at Edward Elmhurst Health, to the program to talk about simple lifestyle changes that have a big impact on our health. So my first question is, heart disease is so common. Is this something that you can prevent or is it inevitable for certain people? I think we can't, at this point, have a vaccine for uh, heart disease. Actually, it's the plaque, the atherosclerosis. I think that's the goal in time. Right now, the aim is to try to find it early enough and try to slow the process. Try to put it off as best we can, as long as possible. Uh, the thing I feel like is the most important is to try to find it early, detect it, and find the right people that we should be treating. And what are some things that you can do to detect it early? So I think seeing a primary care physician, or if you have a strong family history or a strong uh, a history of uh, heart disease in your family, you, maybe a cardiologist. Usually we use lab tests, uh, talking to people, getting a history. Uh, there are heart scans out there. It's not for everybody. Right now at Edward Elmhurst, we're doing it for 40 or older. But as a cardiologist, I get it to order it for people younger than 40 that I feel are high risk. But I think uh, seeing a physician, talking to them, I think is the first step. What would indicate that someone's at high risk? I know when I get my blood pressure taken, um, that to me would be a first sign that something's going on. Is that accurate or is there something beyond that? I think that's one of the things. Also uh, looking at uh, lab work, if you've been told that you have high cholesterol, family history, uh, history uh, or actually currently smoking, if you have history of diabetes, um, all these are factors. Um, we're actually learning that uh, just your nationality. If you have a South Asian ancestry, that actually gives you a, uh, a point for a high risk. Um, but I think family history, I think, is a very important factor. And I think those are the people that should be seeing their physicians earlier. When you look at the family history, it's important to look at lifestyle, choices of your family, meaning let's, let's say your father had a heart attack but might have had diabetes or, or drank, is that a more of an indicator that the lifestyle had a bigger play to that or is it the fact that he still had a heart attack I should get checked out? I think first of all if he had a heart attack and if they were less than 55, I think that's a red flag for me. Uh, females less than 65, um, but I feel like some people could be doing everything right diet, exercise, but they still have that. So then there's something more to it. I think there's a genetic uh, condition. We're learning there's uh, an entity called familial hypercholesterolemia. Their bodies are just not able to kind of take the cholesterol and uh, work with it like usual. Initially, when I started as a cardiologist, we were thinking it was one in 500, but I think it's actually one in 200 people that actually have familial hypercholesterolemia. Looking at history, but even lab tests, we can find out the people that might not be 
homozygous where they have both genes, but even uh, a milder case, those are the people that we need to worry about. Got it, that makes sense. So let's shift to lifestyle habits and choices. Um, one of which that I constantly think about is, is weight, is maintaining your weight, and then I think about smoking or alcohol, the things you should or shouldn't be doing. Can you touch on that for a bit? No, I think all these factors, uh, weight, smoking, they affect heart disease in a way of inflammation. So I think every factor causes our body to be more hyper acute in an inflammatory state. We're learning, you know, we can take care of the blood flow with aspirin, we could take care of cholesterol and plaque with the cholesterol lowering medications and there's many that are out there now we have injectable medications, people that can't tolerate oral medicines. But I think the unknown, and I think this is kind of where the future is, is inflammation. But right now we know diet and exercise, staying away from smoking, these type of things will help us to decrease the inflammation in our body. That makes a ton of sense to me, and obviously stress causes inflammation. Absolutely, and I think there's another part where it constricts our vessels. So it makes every part of our body, and especially the heart, if the vessels, the are smaller, you don't get enough good blood flow. Any part of our body, the heart is a muscle, if it has to work harder over time, and if you're stressed throughout the day and for multiple days and for years, that will take a toll. So I think, like anything, it's finding it early because it's hard to treat after the fact when the damage has been done. So it's trying to take care of these things, stress, weight, smoking, anything that we can control early on so that we can prevent the damage. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, thank you so much for being here. I can keep talking about this all day, but I think these are some great tips. Oh, absolutely, thank you so much. Stay with us, more 630 Naperville is coming up right after the break. People from Chicago pull for Chicago. We root for his teams, celebrate his successes, push through his challenges. When people call us the second city, it's misleading. We're second to none. We're hardworking, resilient, but we have a good time. When you live in Chicago, you proudly call this home. Your bank should too. We're Wintrust, built here, for here. And we've taken our place at Chicago's bank because no other bank can say the same. It's only Q4, Susan. We were there when your fourth cold brew felt like a heart attack. <laughs> oh no. Cold brew has a lot of caffeine in it. We were there for that. Fair. And we're here for everything else. Here it's personal because we get to know you. Welcome back to 630 Naperville. Up next, we're spotlighting Patty Gustin and her many years of service in the Naperville community. I've been blessed to be in Naperville and be with so many wonderful people and know so many wonderful organizations. Patty Gustin's roots in local government actually began before she moved to Naperville. As a Lyle resident, she approached the village about all the cut-through traffic in her neighborhood, she says, was posing a danger to her small children. So a group of residents, we got together and uh, petitioned the village for help. Um, and so that kind of drew me into, hey, you know, what is this all about? And how do we make sure that all things are, are good? And then the mayor, Mayor Gallardi at that time, asked me if I wanted to sit on their planning commission. To which she obliged springboarding her journey into local politics, though she prefers the term public service. Politics to me is you just decide you wanna run for something because you got some political desire, right? It's more self-serving. For me, I am about community and how I can use that vote to help community, right? Upon coming to Naperville, Gustin has volunteered her time on various boards and committees such as the City's Planning and Zoning Commission, League of Women Voters, DuPage Water Commission, and was even a liaison to our own board here at NCTV. I've known Patty Gustin for over 25 years. We first met as volunteers. We volunteered together on many community uh, committees, um, supporting the community. When you thought of a volunteer who you could trust, who had integrity, um, you thought of Patty Gustin. And she was one of the first, she's been involved with uh, Kids Matter 20 years at least. 
I can remember the Planning Commission meetings going until 1 o'clock in the morning. Some people were not supportive of the Water Street development, but then look at today, right? Look at today. In 2015, Gustin won a seat on the Naperville City Council, bringing with her all that prior experience and her background as a realtor, which she says helped her to keep a healthy balance between what's best for community and what's best for businesses. You have to have that balance because your taxpayers are going to be your business owners. Your taxpayers are going to be your property, you know, your residents, right? And they both want something of the same, but then they want something different. While on council, Gustin was an advocate for public safety. Former police chief Bob Marshall says she was very supportive of several key initiatives that needed the council's approval for funding. Naperville was one of the lowest communities for the number of police officers per resident. So we added numerous officers during her tenure and she was very supportive. And Patty was very supportive when we came to the budget process in enhancing our technology, such as in-car uh, video audio system, obviously our body cameras. During her tenure, the councilwoman continued to work as a liaison to the Sister Cities Commission, an organization that fosters lasting relationships between the city of Naperville and cities in other countries. Nitra Slovakia, Pascuaro, Mexico, and most recently, Cancun, Mexico. She has visited Cancun, met with the mayor over there, and then uh, started that collaboration, and then later Cancun became one of our sister city as well. So her collaboration, her contribution in that is significant for Naperville. She was very helpful and instrumental when we were trying to donate a fire truck to um, Cancun, which we were able to do that successfully. And they have one of our decommissioned fire trucks in Cancun today that's helping a lot of folks out there. And most recently, she was very helpful in um, getting communication back and forth to the folks in Ukraine that are suffering in very many difficulty, dif difficult ways these days. And we were able to uh, transport a, an ambulance out to the uh, Ukraine folks and uh, having them use that in their fire department and their war efforts. Back here at home, Gustin was also influential in bringing the Hispanic Heritage Festival to the city of Naperville. She's very dedicated in, uh, in that aspect as well, in bringing more diversity, working together with other communities, and bringing everybody together. That is what Naperville stands for. This last October, Gustin ran for DuPage County Board, but was devastated to discover two of her campaign signs defaced with swastikas. I read a proclamation at the synagogue about a month before this incident, and I shared that my family is honored in the Holocaust Museum for saving Jewish lives in Lithuania. And I shared that story. And so was that the reason why? I don't know, but there's no reason that justifies anything like that. I, Patty Gustin. Still, she pressed on and was voted onto the DuPage County Board. It is a bigger footprint, so you have more of an effect on more things. And I think that um, my experience from the city transitions very easily to the county to be able to get things done. So there's not that big learning curve, uh, particularly with Naperville being one of the largest cities in DuPage County. Now she's going to be seeing so many more people and being a leader of so many more people. And they're going to be so happy they have her on that board. I'm Kevin Maycheck for 630 Naperville. Up next, we're shifting gears to highlight some stellar local athletes in this edition of Sports Story. They say it's not about the destination, but the journey and the people you meet along the way. This is true, especially in sports. And there's no better example than the longtime friendship of Naperville Central basketball player Natalie Jordan and team manager Anna Pahovi. Anna, who has special needs, has a love and passion for the game of basketball. The Naperville Central Basketball Program enables those with special needs to be involved in sports, as they have an essential role on the team. As the team manager, Anna has the typical responsibilities of any manager, such as filling the water cups and bringing out the warm-up basketballs. Yet, her impact on the team is much more than the job description as she is one of the team's leaders and most meaningful supporters. 
But I started. Um, I started to just come to the games. Um, day. Um, daily, and I would fill fill um fill the cups for water for the players. My experience um with the um girls basketball team here at Central um it's been really fun because I get to come and support all my friends, including Natalie Griff. I love to support all my teammates and cheer with them on. And I think I um bring like team spirit to the team. <laughs> Natalie Jordan, a starting guard for the Naperville Central Redhawks, has a special bond with Anna, unlike anyone else on the team. Their friendship goes back to before they stepped on the court. I moved here in first grade and I met Anna because she was in one of my classes in second and third grade. And um, I've been involved a lot with the special needs community, um, especially through basketball. Um, so we did uh, basketball at Madison, um, our middle school together, and then we also um, started seeing each other more once I joined the Special Olympics basketball team as an assistant coach. And Anna is a phenomenal athlete <laughs> and she always likes to push her, the rest of her teammates and so I love being involved with her and all the other athletes. From the game's tip off to the last shot, you can hear Anna from the bench shouting words of motivation and encouragement to her teammates on the floor. Likewise, substituted players are welcome to the sidelines with high fives and positive affirmations, as Anna takes immense pride in being at the center of the team's morale. Natalie and Anna's time as Red Hawks is coming to a close as they are both seniors. Yet the pair continues to cheer and play hard for each other as if it's their last dance. I think that instead of focusing on it like being like a sad moment, just try to like take it all in, um, understand that it is coming to an end, but uh, the most important thing is like the friendships that we take away and like the journey that we've had as a team and knowing that a lot of the girls have known Anna for a long time. It's special to have like our last season with her. My favorite, um, my favorite memory would have to be um, being able um, to be on the bench with, with all my best friends and being able to um, come out and support them and give them a lot of team spirit and I give them a lot of hope. And a lot of confidence. After graduation in May of 2023, Natalie plans to attend college to pursue degrees in both special education and elementary education. Anna plans to attend the College of DuPage, where she aims to pursue her passion for working with animals. Yet, as they will go their separate ways to follow their aspirations, the friendship they've created and maintained for over a decade will last far beyond the hardwood. For Naperville Sports Weekly, I'm Marcel Francis. We were there when your kid discovered poison ivy. Now remember, leaves of three. Let it be. We were there for that, and we're here for everything else. Here, it's personal, because we get to know you. People from Chicago pull for Chicago. We root for its teams, celebrate its successes, push through its challenges. When people call us the second city, it's misleading. We're second to none. We're hardworking, resilient, but we have a good time. When you live in Chicago, you proudly call this home. Your bank should too. We're Wintrust, built here, for here. And we've taken our place at Chicago's bank because no other bank can say the same. Welcome to Naperville Notables. I'm Liz Spencer. Have you been to Bev's in downtown Naperville? Well, we're joined today by Bev. So Bev, when we go downtown Naperville, there's this great restaurant on the corner of Chicago and Washington, and it says Bev's, and it's bright and beautiful, just like you. So tell me about Bev's. Well, that used to be a Standard Oil gas station. I started my first music store behind Vitalman Furniture Store, and that was my first music store with 700 square feet, which isn't very big to have pianos and organs, an office, and two teaching studios. This man called me at the store, and he said, well, I am in charge of all the Standard Oil gas stations in the United States, and we're gonna liquidate that gas station across the street from you. Would you be interested in that? And I said, oh, that dirty old gas station? So it was $40,000. So then I bought it and moved across the street. I just was so happy there. 
Bev, Patterson Piano, and Organ Company opened three additional music stores in 1973, 74, and 75. Located in Addison, Fox Valley Mall, and Woodfield Mall. Bev sold all the stores in 1982, but retained ownership of properties in Naperville and Addison. The Naperville property would become a popular restaurant known as Jimmy's Grill in 1997. At the end of 2021, Will Cullen, owner of Empire, became the building's newest tenant and asked Bev to use her name for a temporary establishment. Boy, lucky, you know, my title is Lucky Bev. I'm always so lucky. <laughs> so, but then he wants to change the name later. I don't care. Callie's. So I'm happy and he's happy. That's awesome. So tell me about your music career. I mean, I know that you, I mean, you sold pianos and organs, but you also played. Actually, I started organ. We lived uh, for two years in Wheaton and I took lessons at the college and I could practice on the big organ there a certain hour. But you also played at different stadiums. You were able to have this book of music in your head and play, play everywhere. Tell me about that. Al Melgard was the organist at the Chicago Stadium. So I called him and asked if he gave lessons. And he, he said, yes. So I took a weekly lesson from him at his home. I wanted to learn his arrangements. After some practice, Bev was invited to play the organ at the Chicago Stadium for the Chicago Blackhawk Games. Those pipes were all throughout the stadium. It was a fabulous instrument. However, by the time you'd play a note, there would be a delay. You couldn't hear what you were playing at the time that you played it. And automatically, you started to slow down. But after a couple of measures, I realized I, I can't hear, I can't listen. I just got to play and go just normally and shut off the sound. Fun times. You also were a pilot, right? Harold White was the editor of the Naperville Sun. And the Sun was uh, located right next to my first store. So Harold and Eva befriended me. They invited me to come out to their house at Naper Arrow after work and go for an airplane ride. I was afraid. So then after that, Harold wanted me to take lessons. And that's exactly what Bev did, meeting her second husband, Bill Fryer, in the process. Learning to fly and being a pilot was a big part of our marriage. Harold found an airplane he wanted me to buy, which I did. And it was a two-seater airplane. And he said, you can tie it down in our backyard. Then Bill and I, after marriage, we did buy a bigger plane, four-seater. It was wonderful to have somebody to talk to about your flying and share it. My philosophy in life is when one door shuts, a better one's going to open. Bev, thank you so much for sharing your stories. You are truly an inspiration for all of us. And we'll be back with more 630 Naperville. A quote I've always loved is by Confucius, who said, they must often change who would be constant in happiness or wisdom. Now it's my time to step aside as host of 630 Naperville and hand off the baton to someone else. I've thoroughly enjoyed being part of the launch of the series. It's been a pleasure to meet so many of you and share what's happening in Naperville with you. But that's going to do it for us on this edition of 630 Naperville. But please remember, if you think you can do more, you can. I'm Joe Chura, and I'll see you around Naperville.